So what makes Firefinch special in my opinion is that, um, you know, you have the, the normal sort of field guide type illustrations, <clears throat> uh, Orange River Franklin and Red Wing and uh, Shelley's Franklin. But what makes it different is that you have all these sort of situational, um, what I call thumbnails or, or vignettes, these sort of sideline illustrations. Um, you know, they show the birds in their typical habitat, um, in postures and behaviours like you would see them in the field or doing something characteristic or engaged with other members of the species or maybe some other species or and, and, and even um, sort of man-made elements. So, you know, drawing the painting, the normal sort of um, fixed, fixed um, posture illustrations, it's, it's very technical and very detailed, um, you know, counting the number of feathers and each marking has to be right and the proportions and all that. So drawing these, um, these sideline images are, 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 you know, it's really fun. It's really more, it's really creative and exciting. Um, and I get to relive lots of birding moments. Um, all of these are based on personal birding experiences. And I found that it's, it's really much more difficult for me to paint something if it's a species that I haven't seen before, that I don't have any personal experience with. Luckily, there are not too many of those, but, um, and we're always working on it. But yeah, so sort of the um, how you would see the bird in the field, essentially. And I, I think it gives you a good vibe of, of how it works. So um, just to show you where the whole process starts. Um, so it starts with laying out the plate and putting out all, all the annotations and, and whatever needs to be there. And that leaves then leaves a big gap, which, which I then leave to fill in with these um, these vignettes or these thumbnails um, then you know typically on the day before I paint something I, I, I think I think about that species a lot and think like how would I characterize it like where would be a typical place you would see it what sort of habitat what would it be doing uh, the season um, all of that um, so this is just one example out of almost a thousand species each one has their own little character and what it's, it's a unique thing that makes it special but I thought we'd have a quick look at these um, these little grey-winged Franklins. I really like uh, grey-winged Franklins. So this is the um, the before, I guess, and then the after would look something like that. So this is the the image that I um, that I produced for grey-winged Franklin. So uh, grey wings, um, interesting birds because they, um, you know, the Afrikaans name is is Bergpatrys. So uh, mountain partridge I guess um, and they go right up to 3,000 meters on Lesotho in fact that's the, the first place I ever saw one was up in the Lesotho Highlands my uncle worked on that um, Lesotho Highland water scheme back in the day so that's the first place where I saw them but you also get them in high altitude grasslands along the Drakensberg um, you get them in Saika Bosserand and those high grasslands but then on the west coast here, where I, where I live now, they actually come right down to sea level, and you find them in the in the Strandfeld here. Um, so I see them um, sort of basically every day here. In fact, they I mean they're super tame when the when the kids um, jump on the trampoline. These the grey wings come running, um, begging for food. But nevertheless, they're very special little birds. But I wanted to specifically show them in a, in a situation of a cold, uh, windy mountain grassland um, and for that I drew on inspiration um, we when I was in my sort of early 20s we always used to go to this farm um, at, in, in, in Miamal in the eastern free state um, and in winter time that's it's bitterly bitterly cold and you know being sort of young people students there, there used to be a lot of late nights but not that many early mornings so I used to get up before everyone else while everyone is still asleep and then sort of go for these semi-frozen walks in this in this grassland um, and spend time with grey wings and lots of other mountains special. Um, so that's what I wanted to to reflect. So this is the scene that we came up with. Um, so you've got the sandstone ridge um, in the background, um, mountains in the, in the distant background and then these three birds. They're probably more more hidden somewhere in the grass that you can't see and I can imagine there's another another group on that on that ridge in the background and they uh, count according to, uh, to each other 
So I got lots of nice reference photos of grey wings because they in the garden here. Yeah, so I'm always taking pictures of my cell phone. I'm not a big bird photographer, but so the reference images weren't an, weren't an issue. Now you, you know at first glance you look at this image and you think it's all brown um, and grey, which 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 is true. Um, and I mean that's part part of the camouflage of these uh, of these grey wings. But if you if you look at them very closely, they're actually really 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 beautiful birds, and they've got all these little speckles and freckles as I call them. On the, on the under parts and then the upper parts with this intricate barring and these pale feather shafts and then the crossbars and little black dots in between um, so really really beautiful birds uh, drawing the birds themselves um, takes a long time I mean this whole image would take maybe three to five hours uh, say roughly half a day's work so maybe we can actually run through some of the layers I wanted to show that it was really cold, um, so I brought in this mist that you can see behind this ridge and also uh, on the bottom on the plane here, and also sort of softening out the, the edge of that back ridge there. I also looked at um, having some, you know, showing this bird's breath as it was calling. Um, I remember a photo of Warwick Darwittons that I saw ages ago um, that showed uh, a bird's breath in the early morning. But yeah, that didn't really work very well, so I just left that out at the end of the day. Um, obviously, a lot more detail in the foreground with the little rocks and the stones. The, the, the light is coming from sort of the left inwards, quite low and quite strong. So the shadows on the birds themselves are quite strong um, with this early morning sunlight coming in. And also you can see the angle of the, the shadow behind this bird on, the, on that little sandstone slab that it's sitting on. Um, the grass, you know, painting grass can be quite um, a challenge. Uh, but basically what I've come to realize through, through the years is that the rougher you make it, the better it looks. Uh, but then there's always, I always typically use three colors. So there's the sort of brown, which is the dominant color, and then um, these little white, almost white, yellowish white highlights, and then a dark charcoal gray for the base. Um, to make it nice and three-dimensional. You also see that there's one tuft in front here that's sort of blurred out, um, you know, a bit closer to the observers just to, to, to give it a bit of dimension. And then when everything is basically finished, I'll put these um, shadow lines, you know, over the birds themselves. So, so you're not showing a bird perfectly as, it, as you would see it in a field guide. It's, it's realistic, so it's all half obscured, half, half of it is behind the grass and you've got shadows going across it. And, weird angles and weird postures but it's all part of the fun and all part of the uh, what, what, what makes it a real creature in a real environment and I really hope that um, that Firefinch will come across not only as a appreciation of birds but also the the wild places that they inhabit um, and hopefully the birds can act as a catalyst for conservation of these um, increasingly threatened um, areas um, wilderness areas so there you have it, a glimpse of what goes into one of these paintings. Thanks.